Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebase.com. We are at the 2023 International Society of Bases Convention in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I had the great pleasure of spending some time with Paul Ellison, who I'm sure many of you know. And I wanted to speak to him about his relationship with two of the other greats of our time, Gary Carr and Francois Rabat. When did you first meet Gary Carr? That would have been at Northwestern University. We were both working with Warren Benfield in 1965. I hear a woman's name spoken of a lot with the history of, the, of teaching the double bass as being a very important person. So. He was just such a wonderful mentor. As uh, He was a dedicated orchestral player in Chicago Symphony and had studied in Philadelphia and been principal of other orchestras before arriving in Chicago. And he was the soul of the beginning of the Northwestern wow. legacy. And now, of course, we have Andy Rossidi doing Northwestern. And so he's part of the family because he's mine. Yes. You know, I, I, I can take some blame for Andy, uh, who also studied with Richard Davis. I want to give Richard definitely a shout out yeah. Richard is amazing but Warren Benfield that's the that's the lineage and what are your memories of Gary at this time and you're, you're both studying with Warren Benfield was there he asked me if I had the time to go and play on a tour with him because he needed a backup of somebody playing the bass line for him doing yes and I was broken-hearted because I already had something booked because what would have been better than because <laughs> you have to realize that when I was an undergrad was when he put out his first record and when he did his TV production with Leonard Bernstein. Yes. And it just, it was the best kick in the butt that I could have. Why am I not sounding like this person that, that is my same age? Yeah. And uh, it, it was life changing for yeah. that to have happened. So then to be with him in person was just awesome. Yeah. And so we've been friends ever since. That's amazing. And, and the other person that's uh, a huge presence in the bass world and uh, is the great Francois Rabat. And I just wanted, right. I mean, when did you first meet the maestro? I mean, well, how did that relationship come about? Because This is a little bit of a story, but we're standing at the ISB convention. Oh. Before we had ISB conventions, we had conclaves in Cincinnati. Barry Green put that together. And one summer, I was teaching at the AFFM Congress of Strings, which was another event. The Musicians Union paid for a summer string orchestra. So both things were overlapping at the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music. And Frank Proto, which we have to bring in here, was already a friend of Francois. He wasn't studying with Francois, but he was as composer and friend. And he arranged for Francois to come to this Cincinnati event. Wow. So it's the first time I met him in person. And we were sitting of several bass players, including people like, uh, you name the famous jazz player. Yeah. We, uh, the jazz, everybody was watching Francois play this concert. And I just said, I, I must not play the same instrument that this man plays. And I wonder if he would, I was 40 at the time. I wonder if he would consider taking me as a student. So that was the first time I asked him. And of course he said, no. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't teach. It's not what I do. So by the time it came to 1983 and several phone calls later, and I was basically begging him on the phone to consider taking me. He finally said, you are serious, man? I said, yes. But you have two jobs. You have symphony job and Rice University job. You, what, you do what? I said, I come to you for as many months as you'll have me. Wow. So I took leaves in 1983, and that was the beginning of a 10-year process that I would go regularly to see. But I had to nearly mortgage my life in order to do it. I basically did do that because, you know, I just had to stop work for that initial six months because I went for six months and put everything on hold because it was worth it. Yeah. I've never been sorry having done it. And it's so wonderful the way that you've taken uh, his teachings and shared them with the, you know, the wider world here. And just lastly, I wonder if you have any advice for some of the younger students. And we've got so many inspiring players here at the ISB. What words of advice do you have for someone starting out in their bass career? It's all about the music. If it's a scale, if it's pizzicato, if it's arco, it's still about the music. 
And that's the biggest lesson of Francois. If, if you play it, make it shareable. The person listening to you needs to absolutely appreciate the sound that you're making. And if you do that, you will be happy and so will everybody else. It's a wonderful message, sir. So thank you so much for joining me today and chatting and meeting you in person, Paul. It's, it's a pleasure. It's wonderful. Well, so. I'm so enjoying everything that you do with Discover Double Bass. My students watch you. You're a hero in our school. Oh, gosh, that's so kind of you to say so. It's, and just, do it. it's just fact. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much for everything that you do, thank sir. Thank you. It's just it's been a pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> Cheers, Paul. Thank you so much. Cheers. That's great. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I think it's fascinating to look back at the history of our instrument, the history of the evolution of the teaching. And I just want to thank all of these incredible people. Of course, Mr. Ellison for participating, but on behalf of everybody else in the bass world, Gary Carr and Francois Rabath, you've all done so much for us. And we, yeah, we appreciate you. Thank you. And we'll see you next time.